Assalamualaikum dear students. In the previous class, we started the topic doing critical discourse analysis. We'll continue with the same topic, but let me make you recall whatever we have discussed so far regarding this topic in the previous lecture. So uh, in the previous class, we talked about criteria for doing discourse analysis or for doing, uh, you know, for carrying out a critical study, a critical research in the field of discourse analysis or critical discourse analysis. So we talked about certain criteria that a discourse analyst must possess certain criteria. Okay. Uh, then we talked about the stages. So uh, the stages of doing discourse analysis, we discussed the very first stage, choosing a research topic then posing a research question or research questions, establishing the context, preparing and coding the source material. So these are the points which we discussed in the previous class, okay? Uh, choosing a research topic, posing a research question or research questions, establishing the context, and preparing and coding the source material, preparing the data simply, okay? Like codifying the discourse, um, transcribing into written form or printing, in out, printing it out or giving numbers to paragraphs, sentences and lines and in case of corpus-based discourse analysis or corpus-based critical discourse analysis, uh, generating of uh, corpus. So uh, we'll start with the step, the, the stage number five, that is, preliminary reading or action orientation. It's a very simple stage of doing discourse analysis or critical discourse analysis. What you have to uh, do is to read and reread the text in order to get familiar with it, okay? Simply take the text of uh, the discourse which you are about to analyze, read it once, read it again, read it three times, four times, keep on reading until unless you get familiar with each and every single, uh, you know, word, with each and every single utterance, with each and every example, with each and every evidence, with each and every argument, okay? So you, at least three times reading must be done, okay? You must read it, uh, the entire text. If like you are analyzing two or three novels, then once or just twice of reading is sufficient enough. But if you want to, you know, explore a short story or a, one single speech of a politician, then you may read the text for three or four times in order to have, you know, uh, greater familiarity with the text. Uh, while reading the text, while uh, preliminary reading the text uh, during action orientation, you need to give special attention to what is most relevant to your research questions, okay? Uh, keep on reading the text and give special attention to those points which are relevant to your research question. Simply give special attention to those points, to those arguments, to those examples, which can prove your argument, okay? Which can, which can prove your view stance, your, your uh, point of view. So uh, this is called preliminary reading that you should give it a reading or you should read it twice or thrice, okay? Uh, in order to get familiar with the text and to have an idea that we will do the examples or the arguments or the evidences which you are looking for in a particular discourse, we will do the exist in that particular uh, piece of discourse, okay? Uh, then moving to stage number six of doing discourse analysis, and this is the most important in the practical stage, collecting and examining linguistics and discursive devices. This is the stage where you actually perform the analysis, okay, where you actually collect the information those arguments, those examples which can prove your view stance, okay? And you examine them, okay? From a discursive uh, perspective, from a discourse perspective, from a critical discourse perspective, you collect the examples simply and you analyze those examples. Now, some discursive devices or some discursive strategies, linguistic devices are uh, listed below, but keep in mind, this is a general list of the discursive devices. If you are using a specific theory, for example, if you are using the theory of Van Dyke, then 
instead of these points, your focus must be on the indicators proposed by Van Dyke. Okay, if you are using the theory of uh, Michael Halliday, the transitivity theory, for example, then your focus must be on the processes, on the participants, and on the circumstances only. Similarly, if you are using the, if you want to apply the theory of the, a checklist of grammatical and lexical categories, which is proposed by Leach and Short, if you want to uh, apply that theory on a discourse, then your focus must be on those, you know, grammatical and lexical categories which have been proposed by Leach and Short in their particular model. So many models are there. If you want to apply, if you want to analyze a conversation using some theory of conversation or theories, then your focus must be on the uh, features which are inside those theories, such as error and repair or turn taking, turn allocation technique, like multiple theories are there. What I want to say is that the these discursive uh, strategies, discursive devices, they are, you know, actually they come from the theoretical framework. They come from the theory you have selected for your research study. They come from the theory which you want to apply on your uh, on the particular discourse which you have chosen for analysis. Uh, anyhow, here is a general uh, a list of certain linguistic devices, certain discursive devices, discursive strategies. So let's talk about them. Uh, World groups, first of all, your focus must be on the world groups. This idea I have taken from Michael Halliday's Systemic Functional Linguistics from the ideation and function of language insight from the transitivity system of Michael Halliday. World groups, like what kind of uh, phrases are used uh, uh, in a particular discourse, in a particular speech, any kind, any piece of discourse which you select for your analysis. So world groups can be nominal like noun phrases, okay? What kind of verbs are used in a particular discourse? What kind of propositional and adverbial groups are used in a particular discourse. So uh, your focus may be on the world groups. Your focus may be on the grammatical features, like what kind of pronouns are used, okay? What kind of adjectives and adverbs are used? If you remember the uh, concept of us and them, the theory of us and them proposed by Van Dyck, which I have already discussed in one of the previous lectures. So uh, over there, if you look at the use of pronoun in discourse, like if you look at the speeches of Imran Khan, for example, so he, he uses the word us for uh, all the Muslims of the world. And he uses them, okay, for the non-Muslims people or for the people who, who have got, you know, the Islamophobic ideology or the anti-Islamic ideology. In the same way, if you look at the white people, so they use the us for them and them, uh, they, they use us for themselves while them for the black people, okay? Same as the case with uh, feminist discourses as well, okay, or anti-feminist discourses. So uh, you must focus on the pronouns, us and them, okay? Then your focus must be on the adjectives and adverbs that what kind of description is there? How do the author or how, how, how is the author of the text which you have selected for your analysis, how is that author described, you know, the in-group members and the out-group members? So you must be focused on uh, adjectives and adverbs. Specialization, it is uh, one of the most important linguistic strategy, linguistic devices. Specialization, uh, uh, it, you know, uh, the use of PC wise and active wise, they tell us about the narrative, about the entire ideology of, uh, you know, the discourse producer and his or her entire in-group uh, in group members. So, uh, for example, if uh, one of the uh, female people, uh, for example, if they say, we are under economic pressure, like the, the ARY people, they will say we are under economic pressure, okay? So it is like a general term, uh, a general sentence, a general utterance, you are under economic pressure, like they do not deliberately use the active voice, okay? Why? Because they do not want to put the blame on someone. On the other hand, uh, the, Jew, the banker persons of Jew TV channel, and these are the examples I have been discussing since the very first day of this semester, if you remember. So the Jew TV uh, people say, they will say, Mr. or Mrs. X, for example, Imran Khan, 
puts us under economic pressure. So the Jung and Jiu uh, News Paper and TV channel, they will present the same news like this. Imran Khan puts us under economic pressure. Now, if you look at this, there is a marked difference between these two utterances. We are under economic pressure. So like, the, and this utterance does not put the blame on the shoulder of any individual. But if we look at this, here is, an, uh, here is a deliberate attempt to blame someone for the economic pressure, okay? So this is how, if we focus on the uh, grammatical features such as pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, and specialization, etc., we'll come to know about the ideology um, of a particular, uh, you know, group of people, particularly the ideology of the discourse producer. That whether the discourse producer uh, supports he supports someone or he opposes uh, someone. Okay, so this is what we come to know with the help of analyzing such grammatical features. Then we have got certain uh, rhetorical, figurative, and literary features, literary devices, such as similes, similes, metaphors. We have got political metaphors, okay, a very good concept uh, recently introduced uh, to the field of critical discourse analysis, uh, political metaphors. Allegories, proverbs, again, play, proverbs play a very important role in discourses, idioms, Parallelism, synecdoche, metonymy, hyperbole. Look at the news TV channels, hyperbole. Nowadays we have the, uh, you know, the, the movement of the black people, black lives matter, okay? So we can see hyperbole on, you know, on part of the black people as well as on part of the white people, like in the discourses of both. Same is the case with the Pakistani TV channels like AROI and GU TV channel. So hyperbole, the uh, exaggeration simply, exaggeration uh, adds to the credibility of discourses, okay? Uh, what's, what kind of hyperbole do the uh, discourse producer use? Again, we have to focus on that. Uh, rhetorical questions and anaphora, there are so many other devices as well, like we have got presupposition, okay, which plays a really important role in um, discourses, okay. So we need to focus on such kind of rhetorical, figurative, and literary features as well. Then we have got evidentialities, uh, very frequently used in political discourses. Evidentialities can be facts and figures, like these much people were killed in Kashmir, okay? Or uh, this much, you know, huge amount of money was taken as debt from uh, IMF. So such kind of facts and figures are there, okay? Or they can be in the form of phrases as well. Like when someone, particularly a politician, wants to give in evidence, so he or she will say, as everyone knows, okay? This is what we also call generalization. Okay, it can be taken as generalization as well, which is since the theory of uh, Van Dyke we have already discussed. So, uh, as everyone knows, this is crystal clear. In fact, of course, obviously, certainly, these kind of phrases are used by the discourse producers to provide evidentiality. Okay, so uh, uh, yes, evidentialities. Then we have some. Uh, some other discursive strategies, uh, for example, the ways of speaking, it matters a lot, keep in mind, the ways of speaking, like, it, sometimes it is not the thing which a person says, it is the way the person says that thing, the person, the, the way the person presents that thing, it matters a lot, okay? Like, uh, what can be the ways? We have to look at the mood, the tune, we have to look at the, uh, uh, sorry, it's tone, uh, it's a typographical mistake, yes? tone, mood, attitude, prosody, okay? We have to look at all these things. Like if you look at the prosody, for example, it, it shows the attitude of the speaker, okay? Uh, similarly, loudness, prosody, prosody includes stress, pitch, intonation, loudness, okay, duration of uh, speech sounds and, you know, temper, uh, tempo, pace, okay? All these things are inside prosody. Attitude, like simply, we have to look at the attitude of the speaker. Attitude means that, like, the way he responds 
the way he reacts and the way he approaches towards something or someone or some some event okay like a speaker usually he's got uh, a positive attitude towards the actions and deeds done by the in-group members okay on the other hand a negative attitude is usually adopted when a person wants to talk about their out-group members okay so the way a person responds the way a person reacts and the way a person approaches towards something towards some someone or towards some phenomenon towards some event or action that is what we call attitude so we have to look at the attitude of the speaker the discourse producer as well like uh, here is an example I have quoted if focus on the difference between utterance number one and the second utterance. Number one, if your child, like the stress is on the words which I have, you know, uh, underlined and I have written in bold font, okay? If your child is taking fluoride treatment, seek professional advice sit, uh, concerning daily intake. If your child is taking fluoride treatment, seek professional advice concerning daily intake. On the other hand, if your child is taking fluoride treatment, seek professional advice concerning daily intake. Like the focus is here on your fluoride seek concerning. Now, if you look at the ideological stance of these two utterances, we may come to know that here the utterance, the first utterance, it sounds like an advice okay a general advice if your child is taking fluoride treatment seek professional advice concerning daily intake so it is a kind of general advice okay but if you look at this the second sentence if your child is taking fluoride treatment seek professional advice concerning daily intake now it is a kind of command, a kind of order, you may say. Like here you are directed, okay? It is a, a directive speech act. Here you are directed to do something, okay? So this is how, uh, like, uh, mood and attitude and tone and prosody, they make changes, they bring changes in the ideological stunts of discourses. Like here, it does not have that much effect on the minds of the reader, the minds of the audience, because it, it can be general advice. But when a, a hearer uh, hears, a listener hears such kind of things like your child, fluoride treatment, seek. It's again, you know, a declarative speech act. So such kind of things have got a deeper effect on the mind of the reader, the mind of the audience as compared to the first utterance. So uh, we have to focus on being while analyzing the discourse, what we need to focus on, we need to focus on the tone, mood, attitude, and prosody. Okay. Apart from this, as I told you, that this is just a general uh, checklist of discursive devices, discursive strategies, which I have collected. Okay. Uh, we may have so many others. Like we may uh, we may have speech acts. Okay. What kind of speech acts are used? Uh, directive speech acts are there. Commissive speech acts. Assertive. Okay. Well, representatives so what kind of speech acts uh, have been used in the discourse which we are analyzing okay we have to focus on the speech acts as well uh, after five that is number six will be speech acts there are so many so many discursive devices are there but again let me tell you that this is just a general checklist of the discursive strategies linguistic devices okay uh, if you are using a particular theory like the theory of Van Dyke the theory of Leach in short the theory of Michael Halliday the theory of uh, normal fair club okay uh, the theory of but yeah or like so many theorists uh, theorists are there uh, the, peter treasure for example peter treasure he's also proposed certain theories and models regarding language and social class and many other concepts in the field of cda so if you are using a particular theory then you need not to focus on these things your focus should be obviously your focus should be on the nominal groups and verbal groups and propositional adverbial groups okay certain grammatical features uh, rhetorical figures evidentialities uh, ways of speaking but these things vary from 
theory to theory, from model to model, from approach to approach, okay? Because there are multiple approaches proposed by different theorists and different practitioners in the field of discourse analysis and critical discourse analysis. So uh, if you have to use, uh, you have to, you know, take into account those specific features which that particular theorist has proposed in that particular theory which you are using. Moving to uh, the next step, the next stage of doing discourse analysis or doing critical discourse analysis, that is understanding and interpreting the data. Now, when you are done with this kind of, uh, you know, linguistic analysis or, or you may say discursive analysis, uh, micro level analysis, okay, the analysis of uh, language, linguistic signs and semiotic signs, okay. Uh, so, but simply you should uh, you should ask yourself that what does all this mean what, what what do all these examples which i have collected for example what do they all mean how can we how can we relate all these examples to prove our stance to prove our argument okay to, to how simply how can we relate these examples with our own research questions okay so you need to relate the linguistic devices with your consent concept, with your consent theme. For example, if you are exploring, uh, uh, for example, gender inequality in a particular discourse, or if you are exploring the exploitation of the black people by the hands of the white people, or if you are using the, uh, you know, the rights of, if you are exploring the rights of the black people, in uh, their discourses, in the discourses of the black people, okay, uh, or you, you are exploring the, uh, the, the theme of hope, for example, uh, in this, uh, the poems of Ben Okre, or in the speeches of Martin Luther, or Nelson Mandela, or nowadays we have got so many black orators uh, during this, you know, current crisis going on in the West, uh, the black matters lives, uh, black lives matter, that protest, that movement, if you want to explore their speeches, okay? So they have got, you will have to look for a particular theme for a particular concept in that in uh, their discourses. So you have to relate the linguistic devices with your concerned theme, with your concerned topic. In the same way, I have given you examples of uh, GeoTV channel and uh, ARY TV channel, the uh, comparative analysis of both the TV channels. Now, you may, uh, th that isn't again your theme, a comparative analysis, like the, the differences between the ideological stances of these two TV channels. So you need to uh, relate those linguistic devices with the differences between the ideologies or the ideological stances of both uh, the TV channels. Similarly, uh, if you are exploring the speeches of Imran Khan and you want to explore his, uh, you know, anti-Islamophobic ideology, then that is your theme, that is your uh, concern concept, okay? So the basic point is that you need to relate the linguistic devices, the discursive strategies which you have explored with the help of applying a particular theory on a piece of discourse, you need to uh, relate that linguistic analysis with the concept concerned or with the theme concerned, the, the ideology which you want to explore, okay? Uh, support your major themes, your major concepts with the help of arguments, with the help of examples, with the help of facts, like what's what kind of examples, arguments and facts, the linguistics and rhetorical devices used in the text, okay? Like, let's suppose if you, uh, if you analyze the uh, uh, various kinds of nominal groups, verbal groups, and propositional groups, and you come to know, according to like the theory of Michael Halliday, the transitivity system inside the system of functional linguistics. So if you come to know that one of the groups uh, has been engaged by the discourse producer uh, in uh, material processes throughout the discourse, on the other hand, the, uh, the other group uh, has been, you know, uh, engaged by the discourse producer in uh, mental processes and in uh, verbal processes. For example, like we're, uh, we have got six processes related to the verbal groups. Okay, so we may draw, you may draw certain conclusion. Okay, you may relate these 
fix these examples and these arguments with your ideological stance, okay? Similarly, uh, grammatical features are also your examples, your arguments, and your facts, okay? Uh, way, ways of speaking or rhetorical and figurative and literary devices, even charities, they are, all of them are your arguments, they are your examples and your facts, okay? The linguistics and rhetorical devices. So you need to relate uh, those uh, linguistic devices, linguistic examples with your major concept, your major theme, which you want to explore in a particular piece of discourse, okay? So this is then uh, step number seven, understanding and interpreting the data. Now, when you are done with the understanding and the interpretation of the data, what you need to do then in the last step is that you need to present the data on a piece of paper simply you want to write your you need to write, write down your research paper then okay so uh, uh, what you need to do here is to present the results of the study for your audience for your reader okay you need to write down the results you need to uh, write the entire procedure okay uh, with special attention to the results of the study with the major findings of the study so uh, present the major arguments concepts and ideologies um, what kind of ideology do, uh, have you found in a particular discourse what kind of concepts what kinds of arguments have been given for supporting the concepts and the ideology which uh, you want to explore in a piece of discourse okay support the argument with the help of the examples and evidences uh, of the linguistics and rhetorical uh, features now uh, two things number one you need to talk about you need to present the ideology which you want to explore in a particular piece of discourse such as the anti uh, anti islamophobic ideology in the speeches of imran khan for example uh, this is the ideology the concepts the arguments then you need to support those ideologies or that ideology with the help of the linguistic examples and linguistic uh, evidences what kind what kind of examples and evidences here are uh, some of them which we discussed but again uh, again these evidences and uh, examples vary from theory to theory as i told you earlier so you need to support those things provide the uh, you need to provide the examples and evidences from the linguistic analysis to prove that particular ideology which you want to explore in a particular text okay uh, at the end answer the questions addressed in the initial steps because you have uh, we have already discussed uh, posing research questions so while conducting a research study in the field of da or cda you must have posed certain research questions in the beginning of your research work now at the end what you need to do is to pose those questions again and provide answers to them and you need to support your answers with the help of the linguistic examples linguistic evidences okay from the linguistic analysis which you have performed and at the end you need to draw a conclusion okay a precise conclusion a comprehensive conclusion so again in the conclusion you need to talk about both the things the ideology concept and argument and the way the linguistic analysis supports uh, those ideologies or arguments and concepts uh, which you want to explore in that uh, in a text consent so this is all about uh, doing discourse analysis okay uh, i'll uh, summarize the entire topic within a minute doing discourse analysis or doing critical discourse analysis so here is a, a criteria here is you know certain criteria which a discourse analyst uh, a discourse analyst must fulfill okay uh, he should have the idea uh, of uh, the piece of discourse, okay? He should have, um, uh, he, sh he should know, or rather he must know about the importance and critical value of the research question and the critical value of the research study he or she is conducting, okay? And the rest of the criteria are here. Uh, then these stages being discourse analysts while conducting a, uh, a study in the field of da or cda you need to follow all these steps so first of all you need to select a research topic then 
pose research question, then establish the context. You need to establish the context, the context of the author, the context of the text, and the concept of the theory as well, the theory which you are applying, okay? And this, you have to look at, uh, uh, to look at and to take into consideration the socioeconomic, sociopolitical, and sociocultural, sociohistorical uh, conditions of the, the, the in which the that particular discourse has been produced okay you have to look at the discourse producer discourse consumer and these with this kind of context okay then you need to prepare and codify the source material the data for your analysis like if your data is in uh, verbal form you need to transcribe it into written form okay sometimes discourses are in the mother tongues the, the, the native languages of the speakers the discourse producers you, you may need to translate the discourses or you may you may you may have to get the you know uh, the discourses translated by expert translators because like we have got uh, translation uh, the, the translation in uh, interpretation department normal islamabad okay so over the year they provided uh, my respected teacher uh, dr Jamil Asghar Jami Saab, under his kind supervision and guidance, there are certain expert people who are providing the, you know, services of translation. So sometimes people get their discourses translated by such expert people in order to add credibility to, you know, the, the, to the translation, to the method of the uh, translation. So reliability. So uh, various techniques are involved in preparing and codifying the material, the source material. Then pre preliminary reading or action orientation, you need to read it and read it, uh, reread the text, the discourse in order to get familiarity with that. Then collecting and examining the linguistics and discursive strategies. Keep in mind, this is the actual uh, stage of doing that uh, analysis practically, okay? Then you need to understand and interpret the data again it is also the practical aspect of discourse analysis then you need to present the data for your audience for your readers and at the end you need to state conclusions so uh, this is how we may do discourse analysis or we may do a critical discourse analysis study this much is sufficient for today okay uh, stay home and stay safe Allah peace.